Nintendo Switch OLED. First thing we always check is the port. Let's check it out. And everything's looking pretty good. Seems pretty sound. Nothing's loose. So I don't believe this is a port problem. We are clear to do power tests. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. We'll talk about their awesome services in a little bit. First test we'll try is with our 3.5 millimeter to USB-C dongle, which is attached to our Pinstock PSU. This is our five volt test. And we are drawing a 0 0.10 here now using our oem and the usb-c meter and no voltage on either side that tells me we have a charging circuit problem it is not communicating with the nmi2 t36 which would tell this charger to supply 15 volts either something in between the nmi2 t36 or the nmi2 t36 has failed we're going to need to open this up entirely pull the board because the nmi2 t36 is on the other side of the board facing the screen only way to get to it is to completely disassemble We have our board out of the housing. We'll begin our testing on the M92 T36, which is located here on the board for your orientation purposes. We're gonna be checking all the capacitors around this chip. And we're gonna be following these little traces that are going from the capacitors to the chip. And that's generally the side we do not want shorted to ground. Let's test. Okay, we definitely have a short right here, which is indicating that our M92 T36 is bad. We'll continue our testing. Okay, one shorted capacitor. And real quickly, we're gonna lift this shield because we did find out on the last one there are test pads under here we can use for testing as well. We're gonna check these two guys. Uh, and we are short. Now I've highlighted that for you. This particular test pad is definitely 100% connected to M92 T36. Let's go ahead and move up the board to the Pi 3 USB area and take a look around there see if we have any issues i'm just going to test this big capacitor up here okay does not appear to be short that is good now we're going to pop down here to this area and i'm going to check the filters i do believe these are the filters that are very much like the original switch do our normal testing make sure they have continuity going through them but they are not going side to side and we do want to make sure they're not shorted to ground everything is looking good there Excellent. Now we have to flip over the board to side B so that we can test the BQ24193 area. And again, we'll test the capacitors following the lines to the chip. These capacitors here will have multiple lines going to the chip. In that case, only one side should be ground. And everything around the BQ24193 appears to be fine. I have an announcement. I, being Micromage Repair, am moving back home to Texas. My primary service area in Texas will be North Richland Hills, Hearst, Euless, Bedford, and Fort Worth in general. All mail-in services will be temporarily paused through the month of August and will resume sometime in September when I've worked out all the logistics. If you're a local shop in those areas and need microsolving services, please reach out. Talk to y'all from Texas in September. So thanks to one shorted capacitor and a shorted test pad, we know that our problem area is this M92 T36 located right here on the board. So that is where we're gonna zero in and do our work. So one major difference with the OLED compared to the light and the original, there is not a good orientation mark around the M92 T36. So you do have to make note of what the orientation is before you proceed. While I'm setting up my equipment, let me throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. Switch you back to my scope and we'll add some flux, which you can find in the description. Let's pull our bad jib. Well, it's still warm. Go ahead and put our new one on. Carefully. Oh, that was not careful. Let's do that better this time. re wet the solder. Put the center pad to wet. We need that center pad to grab before we let go of the chip. Center it up. Move your heat down and nudging if you need to do it and done 
check our work. It's aligned. It's good. It's good. And good. Let's check and make sure we did not reacquire our short. And we did not check our capacitor up here. Excellent. Clean out the board and come back for power tests. Real quickly, we'll just replace the shield. You can bend these back pretty easily. They will get bent up when you remove the shield, so don't panic. I'm not sure how important it is, but I like to put things back where they go. Did you know PCBWay has a store? Head over to PCBWay.com and click on Module Store and check out their many categories like Raspberry Pi, Arduino, one of my favorites, Electronics Tools, STEM and Robotic, PCB Way Bazaar, and Sensor. They have many products on sale. Check out my link in the description and start your shopping today. Let's begin our power tests. We'll start with our 3.5 millimeter to USB-C dongle, which we have connected to our benchtop PSU. We are looking at PSU channel one. And what we want to see here is just recognition on both sides of the charger. Mm, that's not really what we're looking for. Sometimes it plays up with the PSU. Sometimes it plays nice. Sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, it does not look like it's playing nice. That is not a definitive test. This one is typically more informative. We have hooked up our modified iPhone power squid, which we have retrofitted with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite batteries. The OLED version uses the same version as the original Switch. And in order to activate, we're going to quickly plug in our OEM and then just unplug it. What we want to see here is a steady climb in amperage. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to test dock. Sometimes with this dongle, you got to try it multiple ways. And there we go, we are docking. And the docking lets us know that our port is sound. If the port was damaged in pretty much any way, we would not be able to dock. It also lets us know that our Pi 3 USB is functional. Excellent, now we need to reassemble, let it charge on its own battery for however long that takes and do some more testing from there. As you can see, we're back up on its battery and we're charging. And you can see on the USB meter, we're charging at 15 volts, 0.76 amps. And I just wanna make sure we're picking up our networks. I don't have their Joy-Cons. Man, these screens are quite beautiful. I do have to give them that. And we are seeing our networks. Excellent. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one too. And I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.